If you are in crypto and don't have a hardware wallet, then it's high time to get one. And even if you already have one, consider getting a second one because we always want to avoid a single point of failure. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the decent biometric hardware wallet and see how it stacks up against other players in the market. Now, I do want to point out that a hardware wallet can't protect you from everything. So whether you're new to hardware wallets or you already have one, I suggest to check out my short video on hardware wallet security that is now popping up in the top right corner. With this knowledge under your belt, it is time to review this new hardware wallet that I received from Decent, a Korean hardware wallet manufacturer. This model specifically is called the Decent Biometric. When evaluating a hardware wallet, it is important to look at three main topics, which are security, ease of use, and ecosystem support. So let's start with security and how it stacks up for the decent biometric. So when we look at the website, we see that they offer encrypted storage, a biometric sensor, and a certified secure chip. So the decent biometric wallet uses a secure element that has a rating of EAL5+. So what the hell does that mean? So EAL stands for Evaluation Assurance Level, which stands for the numerical rating describing the depth and rigor of an evaluation. So basically, this is a part of the common criteria for information technology security evaluation, which lets you know how well they tested a device. Looking at Wikipedia, we see that the assurance levels, they go from one all the way up to seven, where seven is more secure. So in this case, we have the EAL5 and then specifically the plus which means that they added some additional tests within this category. Looking at other hardware devices in the market we see that the certification range is between EAL5 plus and EAL7 with EAL5 plus being the standard. Now I did notice that there are no devices that have Bluetooth support that also got the EAL6 plus certification. It seems like only devices that support a wired connection have the EAL6 plus or higher. So here, if we compare our biometric device with the Ledger Nano X, they both have Bluetooth and we see that they both have the EAL5 plus certification. I think it's safe to assume that this is because testing the wireless connection at that certification level would make the device too expensive. Another way of interpreting this is that adding Bluetooth makes things more convenient, but also less secure as it adds another attack vector by making it accessible in a wireless way. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it goes as high as EAL7. And yes, there is one hardware wallet out there with this EAL7 certification, which is the Engrave Zero. Unsurprisingly, this device is also the most expensive one. Long story short, our decent biometric is on par with their certified secure chip. Besides the secure chip, we see that you are required to install an app on your phone and interact over Bluetooth with the decent biometric. This can both be a good thing and a bad thing. Using Bluetooth comes with its own risks and so does using your phone. We use our phones for everything every day and we carry them everywhere. So this increases the exposure to malware, phishing and theft. However, I do want to note that you can also use this to your advantage. If you buy a separate smartphone, this doesn't have to be an expensive one, this can just be one for 100 bucks, and you only use it to install the app and to interact with your device, then of course this is super secure because you don't install any new applications, you don't walk around with it, and you don't connect with it to outside networks. The next thing I want to touch on is of course the biometric sensor, which is the main feature of this device. In general, if you do some Googling, you will notice that it's not super hard to fool biometric sensors. But then again, you will have to get physical access to the device. You will have to get a good set of prints of that person. Then you'll have to copy it. And then you'll have to use those fake fingerprints on the device itself. And this, of course, requires a whole lot of effort. And if you have to be honest, you have a similar risk with a simple pin code. If somebody installs a security camera or they are standing behind you and recording you entering your pin, they have the same setup. They have the pin code. If they can then get the device from you, they will have access to the hardware wallet. So in that sense, it is equally safe as using a pin code. The last security topic that I want to touch on is the firmware. So. As we can see on the website, they have a system to check firmware authenticity. This means that the hardware wallet will check every time you boot if the firmware is legitimate. If not, the device will lock itself up. 
Of course, this only holds up if the manufacturer is producing firmware that is trustworthy. So my advice here is to always wait two to three weeks before installing any new firmware and then see if everybody is happy with the latest firmware. If yes, then you can install it. If no, then just wait a little because usually the device will continue working even if you have older firmware. This brings us to the last category to evaluate, which is ease of use. The ease of use on hardware wallets can be evaluated on two different levels. So first of all, we have the interaction with the device itself, whether it's on the device and the display or the software that comes along with it. And on the other hand, we have the support by third parties, meaning how well you can use the device in the entire ecosystem. The one thing you will notice with the decent biometric is that the main focus that they try to improve on is ease of use by allowing you to bypass the pin code with using the biometric scanner. So rather than you having to use two fingers to push in a pin code every time you want to do a transaction, you can simply use your fingerprint just like once like you do on your phone to sign a transaction. And this, of course, will increase the ease of use significantly. Next to being able to sign a transaction with just your thumb, we see that the entire interface of the device is designed so you can use it with only your thumb. You will never have to use two fingers to interact with the decent biometric. When it comes to setting up the device, it is pretty easy and straightforward. So first you have to charge the device and charge the battery. Once you boot up the device, you'll be able to select the language Then you click create a wallet. Input your pin and your fingerprint. So yes, there is a pin code. The pin code is only used as a backup. If for some reason the fingerprint is not registering anymore, then you can still use the pin code. So when it comes to registering your fingerprint, this works exactly the same as on your mobile phone. So you'll have to click your thumb in different angles to make sure that it will always register. Also good to know you are able to enter up to two different fingerprints if you want to. Last but not least, you will have to write down the recovery phrase. As I said earlier in this video, make sure you write it down on a piece of paper and then secure it in a safe place. I propose that you put it in an envelope, seal that envelope, and then put it in a bank safe somewhere so that nobody can touch it and nobody can make a picture of it. Because again, anyone who has the seed phrase has access to everything in that wallet. This is also why they will ask you to confirm it. So once you write it down, they will ask you to confirm it. So you are 100% certain you have written down the right words. Once you confirm your seed phrase, the device is ready to go. And the only thing you have to do is install the app on your smartphone and connect it via Bluetooth. If you want me to make a video on how exactly the installation works and how the app works, just post a comment and I will record a video if there is enough demand. When it comes to security, you can use your fingerprint or at least try a fingerprint five times. If you fail five times, it will switch to the pin code. And if you fail entering the pin code after 10 times, the device will lock up and you will have to use your seed phrase to recover the device. Now, besides the fingerprint scanner, the Decent also has a very big display, which makes it easy to read which transaction you are signing. And it's also big enough to show a QR code. So if you want somebody to send you coins, you can simply show the QR code and they can scan it and they'll be ready to send. This brings us to the last part of the ease of use category, which is how easy is it to use the Decent biometric in the crypto ecosystem? Looking at the website, we see a full list of coins supported. And right now that it's 3,634 coins that are being supported. And this alongside 59 different blockchain networks. When it comes to addresses, the device can hold up to 80 different addresses in a single cold wallet, which of course is impressive and should be enough for the average user. Now, because it's unlikely that every hardware manufacturer creates partnerships with every single dApp out there, it is critical that the hardware wallet is supported by the major wallets such as MetaMask, Phantom, Rabbi Wallet, and so forth. So looking at the user guide, we see that there is support for MetaMask, Blade Wallet, Hashback Wallet, Kaikas Wallet, Nifty Wallet, and so forth. Now, I do want to note that the integration with MetaMask is based on a QR code system. This means that when you want to sign a transaction, you have to scan the QR code on your phone and then sign it on your hardware wallet. Now, this extra step can be seen as a good thing because you can't accidentally sign a transaction as it requires three steps. It can also be seen as a bad thing because, yeah, it's an extra step which reduces the ease of use. 
This brings us to the conclusion. So the decent biometric wallet comes in at $159, but seems to be on discount most of the time at $119. This pricing puts it on par or cheaper compared to its direct competitor, the Ledger Nano X, which has similar encryption and Bluetooth support. However, I do have to note that the Ledger Nano X has direct integration with MetaMask, full desktop integration for both Mac and Windows, and it supports a wider range of tokens. In turn, the decent biometric wallet compensates for this with a larger screen and biometric fingerprint. Now, the convenience of this instant approval with just one fingerprint scan makes the entire experience that much smoother as it eliminates the need of entering codes or remembering passwords. So my conclusion is, if you are not a power user and you are mobile first, then the decent biometric is an excellent choice. Also, people who dread connecting their wallet to their main PC can consider the decent biometric by using the quote-unquote dedicated smartphone setup that I mentioned earlier. Personally, I think if Decent continues to integrate with popular browser wallets and offer proper desktop support, for example, through a better MetaMask integration, they'll become a great choice for both regular users and power users. So if you're excited to buy the biometric wallet, after seeing this video, then I suggest to use the link in the description of this video because it will give you an additional discount on top of this $119 and it will bring the price down to $109. All right, that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, remarks, don't hesitate to post a comment. Don't forget to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.